Welcome to episode 16, I believe. Today I'll be talking about selective laser sintering, SLS, because somebody told me that he wants to know a bit more about this technology. So let us begin. So let's begin with the aims and learning outcomes. So the aims, I hope to introduce selective laser sintering technology by telling you its process, its theory, its advantages, disadvantages, and its application. Hopefully at the end of this video, you're able to write the process of SLS. You're able to write down the steps regarding the sintering theory that I'm going to tell you. The, and you're able to tell somebody else the advantages and disadvantages of SLS technology. And lastly, to be able to mention the two applications of SLS. So let's begin. So in this slide, I'll be telling you the process of SLS. So here you can see a 2D schematic of what an SLS technology sintering machine would look like. So first you would need a geometric 3D model that you're going to input into the machine. And then the machine is going to deliver some powder onto the build platform by using a recoater roller as you can see in this, in this picture. Next, the laser will fire onto a scanning mirror. That will deflect the laser onto the build platform and it would melt the cross section of the powder layer. And after that is done, the build platform will go downwards. As you can see from the elephant leg, the, the platform will move downwards and then another layer of powder will be recoated on top and the process repeats until, until the model is fully complete. And once the model is complete, the powders, the model is usually taken out from the build platform and the rest of the powder are, are usually vacuumed up and filtered again so that they can, are suitable for use again. So most of the powders are recycled. So that's one of the benefits of the SLS process. So let's go on to the theory then. So moving on to the sintering theory that I want to tell you. So normally there are a few stages in the sintering theory. So the first stage would probably be before sintering. The part is usually the powder is usually heated up to about 0 0.8 or 0 0.7 of the melting point of the powder. So that this so that a less amount of power is required by the laser to sinter the powder together. Next once it is heated up and then the next stage two you'll see that necking occurs formation of neck so what this means is that the powders the powder grain will try to like stick to one another so why this happens is because in nature most most objects would like to reduce their surface energy so what does this surface so a part that has more surface area has a higher surface energy. So by sticking together, the surface area of the part is smaller, so it reduces in surface energy. So that's the driving mechanism of the sintering. And once the necking has occurred, stage three, the evolution of grain boundaries are formed. So here you can see grain boundaries forming. So grain boundary means that the two parts, the two the two grains has like officially been bonded together quite quite firmly and then the last stage is that the pores will start to reduce because the pores will be reduced and the grains will grow in size so yeah this is the sintering theory that i want to tell you and i want to repeat again that the driving mechanism for sintering is that the particles wants to reduce the surface energy that they have by reducing the surface area. So yeah, let's move on to the next step. So next we move on to the advantages and disadvantages of the SLS process. Firstly, for the advantages, no support is required. This is so because the surrounding powder that is surrounding your model is actually supporting the model as well. So there are no overhang parts. Then next advantages is that a wide range of material can be used. So basically, most material that, that is in a powder form can be sintered, depending on how powerful your laser is. 
So if you want to sinter polymer, you have to uh, imagine a certain amount of power laser to sinter it. And if you want to sinter metal, you just have a higher powered laser. However, one thing to note is that for laser sintering of metal, usually you can make it easier by coating your metal powder with some polymer. So what exactly that sintering is actually the polymer and not the metal. So all you need is a laser that can sinter polymer and not the metal itself. Another advantages of the SLS technology is that it usually provides a stronger part as compared to like as compared to like SLA. Why is this so? Because there is no polymerization process that's happening in your polymer. So your polymer is at your polymer has the, the its specific properties already, its alloy properties already. So it you're just bonding them together as compared to maybe SLA where you're from a resin, right? Then you use the laser to polymerize the polymer. So you're actually like cross-linking the polymer. So, so that might result in a slightly weaker part. But in SLA, the property of your polymer is already pretty much predetermined by the initial powder itself. So now going on to the disadvantages for SLA, since there's no support available, you have a chance of warping. So basically what this means is that if you want to print a large horizontal surface plane, the plane could warp because there's really no support. While the print will continue, it might warp. So another disadvantage is that SLS is a powder-based, powder-bit fusion technology. So powder hazard is a very big concern, especially in the recycling of the powder. It could fly around your, your work area, so it might be very hazardous to your health. And I think not many people have done studies on how such powder affects humans currently. So it's important to take note of this hazard and to take pre precaution. Next disadvantages we have is that the flowability of powder. So this is pretty generic to all powder bed fusion technology because the powder needs to flow well as you try to roll the powder across the surface of the build platform. So if your powders are like not circular, there's a chance that it might, might not flow well and then the powder distribution on the, on the build plate is not uniform and that there's varying thickness, then your laser might have a difficult time melting the cross section. So yeah, this is the advantages and disadvantages. So moving on to the applications, there are two main applications that are actually very generic to most prototype, rapid prototyping or additive manufacturing technology. So I'll just repeat again, because these are the two that comes into my mind most obviously. So firstly is the rapid prototyping. So like most additive manufacturing process, it is very good in creating prototypes. And basic, basically right now is that SLS technology is getting cheaper and cheaper. So more and more people can use this method of rapid prototyping to improve their personal business or in their work they do. Another applications of SLS is rapid tooling. So basically, what this means is that people can create the mold, the individual mold for maybe investment casting or maybe create mold so that it allows better, faster injection molding process by creating some internal cooling channels so that the molds are better and more efficient. So I think these are the main applications of SLS. but. If you want to know more about it, I'm pretty sure you can surf the net and surf the company called EOS. So they're very good in selective laser sintering and probably you can learn more about the different applications from them. So yeah, so basically we finished this episode and I want to give a summary of what I've told you from this video. So let me begin with the SLS process. So basically it's a five step process. You have the 3D model, then you apply the powder layer. Then you selectively sinter the powder into the cross section of your model. Then the building platform lowers and next you apply in a next powder layer and repeat till the model is completed. And you recycle powders to use and 
use it again. So next, I want to summarize the sintering theory. So basically, there are four steps. First, the powder is heated to about 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 of the melting point of temperature to allow the laser to have less power to sinter the powders. Then, necking occurs between the powder and then later on grain boundaries are formed and then the grain uh, growth happens so basically the driving mechanism of the sintering process is that the powder wants to reduce the surface energy so higher surface area has higher surface energy and lower surface area has lower surface energy so yeah so the other thing that i told you is on the advantages and disadvantages of the sls process so if you can't remember it Please go back to the video of the point where I said it and replay it again. Next, I hope you know the applications relating to SLS technology and basically in rapid prototyping and rapid tooling. So yeah, let me go on to the references now. So for the references, I would like to thank Print Space 3D for their wonderful schematic, 2D schematic on the SLS process. So that was very useful. Next, I want to thank Tanaka. Hiroya for his paper on the sintering so that, that I could tell you the sintering theory. I thought his illustration of the sintering theory was very good. Next, I want to thank uh, Assistant Prof. Yong Wai for her lesson on prototyping and rapid prototyping that I learned in Nanyang Technolog Technological University. That gives me a lot of info on what additive manufacturing is about and allowed me to create such videos due to the knowledge she sh shared with me during the module so thanks once again and i hope you enjoy episode 16 i will continue with the geometric modeling soon on in the next episode thank you